Do the Cowboys miss Dak's leadership? Uh, it's really unquantifiable. Unquanti um, I think the thing is the mistake that Jerry was making, Skip, all he was looking at was Dak production on the field. And these issues never arose because Dak was always there. And so now he's getting an opportunity to see something like you said, Skip, <clears throat> Tom Brady's value. Yeah, we know he's a transcendent historical quarterback, but it's the locker room, things that never got to Coach Bill Belichick's desk, that his value was equally as important to what he was doing on the field. Now, I'm not saying Dak Prescott is or will ever be Tom Brady, but the way he was handling that locker room, the leadership that he was displaying in that locker room, you get to see firsthand what his absence means. You see, Jerry doesn't like the question of leadership because, Skip, who's the question? In Jerry mind, who's the unquestioned leader of the Dallas Cowboys? Him! Not even close. It's him. Yeah, I agree. So he got upset that the guy said, no, it ain't no leadership problem because I'm still in charge. I'm still here. Mm -hmm. So that's what Jerry took offense to. How dare you say someone else is, is a bigger and better leader of the Dallas Cowboys than me? Well, actually, Jerry, an owner can't ever be a leader. You know why, Jerry? Not to the, <clears throat> the extent that you're thinking because he's not in the locker room every day. There are things going on in that locker room. You have no idea what's going on, Jerry. But Dak would, because Dak would be in there. And they would feel comfortable enough. Some things, they don't feel... Now, they'll go run upstairs and tell you something that Mike McCarthy or Mike Nolan's doing. Mm -hmm. But there are other things that they're only going to share with someone that they feel is only equal playing with them. That's a player. So, yes, they absolutely miss Dak. And his value, Skip, did you know... Dak reached the $40 million plateau bar and, and been out for the last four, five weeks. Dak's value is actually increasing. It's like with them old cars, Skip. You remember you had an old car back in the 60s, 70s? You never knew it would be as valuable in, in, in 2000 or the 2020s as it was like, man, no piece of thing. Dak Prescott ain't playing the game. And, and, and Jerry Jones is starting to realize that his value although he's not playing, is increasing because he brings more than play. It's leadership. Mm. And it's, that, it's greatly missed in that locker room. And Jerry is finding out that, that out the hard way. Mm. Skip, they traded one of your pro bowlers yesterday. Uh -huh. <laughs> what does that mean? I'm just saying, it just goes to show you. So I, mean, I mean, you the worst defense in football, and you trading some of your best players? Mm. Are they tanking? Are y'all starting... What have I told you the last two days? No, you know what, Skip? Everson Griffin is really not a cowboy. He signed with the Cowboys, and when they start trading players that they drafted, mm -hmm. then that's going to show me something. I mean, but guys, I mean, Skip, is Don Terry Poe even playing anymore? I very seldom see him on the field, Skip. Mm. And so, yes, there's a leadership boy. Jerry took exception yep. to the interviewer asking him about leadership yep. because that's an indictment on him. Mm -hmm. And how dare you question my leadership? Okay. Very quickly, I'm going to address the Everson Griffin trade, uh -huh. which did not surprise me. It startled me, but it didn't surprise me when I sat back because I've told you for two straight days on this show, I believe that Jerry Jones is secretly sitting back and folding his arms and playing for Trevor Lawrence. I believe it. And you say, well, how are they going to outlose the Jets? <laughs> I don't think my team, the Dallas Cowboys, are capable of winning another game this year. So they're going to finish 2 and 14. Can that outlose the Jets well, who, who, who haven't lost on won a game yet? Right. Well, Co Coach Belichick might say, hold my beer. Okay. He might be trying to outlose. <laughs> okay. Maybe. Okay. So that's Everson Griffin, yeah. who, by the way, made the Pro Bowl last year in Minnesota. Maybe it was on reputation. But Detroit snatched him up because against Detroit in that division, when he was a Viking, he was really good. 19 games against Detroit, he had 16 sacks. Yeah. Okay. So he played at a pretty high level. They need a pass rusher. And they said, Thank you very much. Yeah. We will take him. Yeah, they gave the man away for a six, a six round. Six Conditional round six round. That means he's probably got to play. He's yes! got to produce. He's got to have X sacks yes! to get a six. Or you're stuck with a seventh round pick. Are you just saying no mas? Are you done for the year? Maybe. I don't know what they say. Are you unloading? <laughs> right? Okay. Now back to Dak Prescott. I wish I could agree with you because I love Dak Prescott, and I do think he's a natural-born leader. 
I don't want to disrespect or diminish his ability to lead this team, but you said it. You, you answered your own question within the question. The way this, this whole franchise is rigged or geared, <laughs> it's all about the owner general manager, Gerald Wayne Jones Jr. I'm sorry, period, end of story. Mm -hmm. He leads because he rules. Everything starts and finishes with Jerry. And it's so weird to me because Cowboy Nation <clears throat> just waits with bated breath for his Tuesday morning radio show, <laughs> The State of the Union, right. from Jerry Jones. This is insanity, yeah. right? Yep. Because every week we just wait. What are you going to do now, Jerry? Nothing. I believe in Mike McCarthy. I've got my man in Mike McCarthy. And isn't it sad that you have your man in Mike McCarthy because you chose him that – because he had the strength of being able to lose and stand tall. It's not about him winning games. Jerry was raving about his ability to stand tall under adversity. Skip. Really? So that's why you hired the guy? Because he can take it on the chin? Skip, can you tell me the adversity really? he endured having Brett Favre and Aaron Rodgers? Well, they did at the end because he yeah. fell apart with Aaron and they had some rough times. When Aaron right? got, think about yep. it, when Aaron got hurt. Mm -hmm. Now, if he, when Aaron gets hurt, if he can keep them Yep. As a pretty good team, like Kyle Shanahan yep. does. Okay. Okay, I can see that. But his team fell apart when the guy when Aaron Rodgers got hurt. Okay. So you're suggesting that all of a sudden Dak has gone into the $40 million range just in his absence. Okay, help me out. I, I want to take you back quickly through what's happened at various points of Dak's career. Mm -hmm. He lost Zeke, remember, in 2017, yes. and they went to Atlanta. The yes. first game was at Atlanta, and do you remember what happened? Yep. They did not have Tyron Smith. Yep. For that game, eight, eight sacks happened. Eight sacks happened. They lost twenty-seven to seven to Matt Ryan and company. Mm -hmm. And Dak was pretty awful. But how can you not be awful when you keep, don't have time to throw and you're right. getting rocked from your blind side again and again and again? Correct. Well, where was the leadership that day? Well, you can't lead against that. And then they come right home. They lose to Philly, and your guy walk it to him, mm -hmm. thirty-seven to nine. And Dak had a QBR of sixteen on a scale of zero to a hundred. And he got sacked again four more times. He threw three picks. He was horrendously bad. Where was the leadership then? I don't know. Then came the Thanksgiving Day game that you referred to yesterday. It was the San, then San Diego Chargers, yep. Phillip Rivers. They go to Jerry World on the Thanksgiving stage, and they route Dallas, uh, just blew him off the field 28-6. to six. And Dak had a QBR of 19. Where was the leadership then? Skip, you, you can't base performance on leadership. There are certain things that are handled. You look at this team and you look at the way they're playing. Okay. And they they might have lost, but Skip, they're losing now before they even hit the field. Okay. I, I got it. But remember what happened last year because it still just sticks in my craw. I mean, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm sore. Like my, my, my insides are sore from having to even deal with this because it makes me sick to my stomach. But last year, after that hot start, mm -hmm. Dak's team went 5-8 and eight over the last 13 games, and Pro Football Focus Rank graded him out as the 15th best quarterback over the last 13 games. Mm -hmm. Remember, you gave him seven Fs. Mm -hmm. And, again, they went to New Orleans and scored 10 points and lost 12-10. to 10. And then Green Bay, they fell behind 31-3. to 3. I mean, that, that looked like a team that had folded up. Then they go to the Jets, and they fall behind 21-6 to six at halftime to a terrible Jets right. team, right? Mm -hmm. And they lose 24-22. to 22. And then it's it's one thing after another. They played, they, they fell behind Minnesota 14 to nothing and roared back and should have won the game, but they lost. And then at New England, they scored nine points and lost. And then Thanksgiving against Buffalo, it, it was just pathetic how poorly they played. Let me, let me finish. Okay. And then they, they go to Philadelphia and they score nine points. They, they go to Chicago, which I left out. They're, they're behind 31 to 14 at Chicago. Aren't you seeing a pattern here? Yes. And it didn't matter how great a leader Dak was because this year they open up and right away the Rams take it right down the field and score to go ahead seven to nothing. And then here we go. Atlanta's up 21 to nothing, 20 to nothing after a quarter, 29 to 10 at halftime. Then Seattle's up 30 to 15 in the third quarter. Then ugh, the Browns come to Jerry World and lead 41 to 14 in the third quarter. And then the Giants with Dak starting that game. He didn't finish, but he started. He was down 17 to three to the New York woeful football giants. Mm -hmm. My point is that this pattern just keeps happening and it had nothing to do with Dak's leadership or lack thereof. It's Jerry's team. Oh, right. So with what you're, what I'm hearing all of a sudden, 
is that the Cowboys is not as good as everybody at Pro Football Focus and Skip Bayless and everybody's okay. been telling me. Remember what Jerry's answer was yesterday? How much blame do you deserve as yes. the GM? He said, as much credit as I deserve for assembling all this talent. Because what's the stat that we know over the last 10 years? Mm -hmm. Second most pro bowlers in the National Football League belong to Gerald Wayne Jones Jr. But, he, he found them. He but, mostly drafted them. But what you tell me about that, what do they have to show for it? You tell me, well, Dak leadership, Shannon, what does Dak have to show for that leadership? He's a leader. Over the last uh, 11 games, there were five in this. Yeah, and or, by, by the way, over his last 17 starts and yes, finishes, yes. he's 6 and 11, okay, Dak Prescott. So, so, 6 uh, and 11? So, oh, 6 and 11, Dak. So maybe. Why Jerry's patting himself on the back about how much talent he's accumulated, maybe they're not as talented as we like to think they are. I, I don't buy that. I liked I didn't love this team, but I liked it. A lot of people loved this team yeah. before the year started. A lot of experts loved this team. Mm -hmm. Consensus pick to win the NFC East, right? Yes. But Most people had them as like the fifth or sixth Super Bowl odds pick. Really? Skip, we go through this every year with the Cowboys. Okay, but not like this one. Because to your point, the last two games have been complete mismatches where they didn't even show up for the Arizona Monday night game right. and against your arch rival. So on Monday night football, they don't show up. And then they go play their arch rival on the road at Washington, and they do not show up. Help me out. Something's really wrong here. And I start with the two new coaches, the head coach and the defensive well, coordinator. Well, well, Skip, at some point in time now, now we, we, we just changed coaches last year. We wiped everything out. We got new coaches. Now, there's a common denominator. There's two common denominators. The owner's still in place, and those players are still there. Now, at some point in time, now, you change coaches again, and you get the same result. So what is it going, what's going on? What have I told you about my team? What do I hate the most about it? It really worked when it had Tom Landry at the top and Jimmy Johnson at the top because players feared for their jobs. Right. There was urgency. There was, oh my God, if I don't, I'm gone. Is there any urgency this week? No. Is anybody feared that heads are going to roll in Dallas? No. Nope. Jerry's hat to skip, but... Jerry standing pat, man. Jerry always makes it a point. From the time that I walked in this door, I had final say, and don't let anybody tell you different. Now Correct. he makes that he a point that. to say that. Yep. So in other words, it's always been my way. So I okay. So if that leadership is 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 not the issue, Jerry leadership is. I agree. It is. It starts from the top because he makes it all about himself. Yes. Does Robert Kraft make it about himself? No. no Nobody not at all. does. Except Nobody him. does. Nobody does. Al Davis used, used to. to. Yeah. And Jerry learned everything he knows about the NFL at the knee, sitting at the knee of Al Davis <laughs> right. at dinner in Thousand Oaks, right. California. Because he's the, because Al was the only owner to sue the commissioner, and Jerry Jones followed suit. Ooh, I love this. Years. Yeah. I want to be you. <laughs> and he became Al Davis. Yes. The difference was Al Davis was a football. man. Man. Right. A he, real football man. He was the commissioner of the AFL. He was, he was a coach. Head so coach. He was a lifer. He was a lifer. He wasn't a guy that had accumulated some money and bought a team. No. He started out in, in, a, in football. Right. And what he taught Jerry is you have to coach the coach. Right. Uh, well, that's fine if you're Al Davis, but if you're Jerry Jones and you're trying to coach the coach, right. are you capable? Right. Are you qualified? You did play college football, but you're an offensive lineman. Right. And I just, I'm not sure about Jerry's football acumen at the highest level. It, Jerry like Jerry likes big names. Now, Al likes you know, big names, too. Yeah. Al likes big names. He liked guys uh, that could run. That's why he wanted Bo Jackson. He had all these Heisman Trophy winners. And, and when Jerry decided, I want Charles Haley, he went and got him. Really? And when he said, I want Deion Sanders, he went and bought him. Even, okay? even against the wishes. Because I'm not right. so sure Jimmy he wanted not. Charles Haley. He did not. And we know... Coach Parcells did not want T.O., but Jerry one. says, I want T.O., and it's my team. I'm going to buy it. Okay, but Charles and Dion, right. they contributed Let, to Super Bowl absolutely, championships. Absolutely. Abs no question okay, about it. So now, I give Jerry credit for that. They, now, they wanted Dion. I mean, uh, at that time, Barry Swissel was the head coach. He was. And they wanted Dion because Dion had swung the pendulum of power. At San Francisco. At San Francisco. They had just won for Steve Young. Right. Yep. I got it. Thank you for watching. You can subscribe here to get the latest from the show and be sure to check out more of the best clips from Undisputed or go watch a few other segments from our other shows on FS1.